Hi friends, welcome back to Learning Magnet. Today, as you can probably tell by the title and by this image here, we will be talking about carbohydrates. So, aha, uh -huh, there it is. Okay, another um, new thing that happened this week is that we decided to create an Instagram and this is the username, learning.magnet. So you guys can go follow us and we'll be posting a lot of different updates, cool giveaways, and things like that. And also, while you're at it, just go follow us and like our post so that way we know that yes, you've come from YouTube and even comment down that, hey, I came from YouTube so we'll know that it's working, okay? And basically, we're, the reason we opened up an Instagram is because is because since we can't really know what you guys want, what video topics you guys want us to cover, on Instagram, you can go ahead and DM us, basically directly message us um, what topics you want us to make videos on and we'll try our level best and make videos on that, those particular topics. So if you are already, please go on Instagram right now and follow us. Um, the username is right here. Also on YouTube, please like and subscribe because it's free. So yeah, and that next time I'm going to repost a video, you don't miss out. So anyways, let's go ahead and get started. So a little bit of background, um, molecules with carbon and hydrogen atoms, they're known as, car they're known as organic compounds, and molecules without carbon and hydrogen atoms are known as inorganic compounds, so like table salt, which is sodium chloride, NaCl. Now, something common you may notice in both of these, something that you need to know for this particular one is carbon. So carbon, it is a useful and a multi-purpose atom. So what does multi-purpose mean? It's basically got many uses. It can easily bind with not only other carbon atoms, but also with um, atoms like hydrogen, oxygen, nitrogen. And so when these four uh, these four atoms are especially essential for carrying out actions required for life. Which four atoms am I talking about? Well, we've got our hydrogen, our oxygen, our nitrogen, and our carbon. Now there are main organic compounds for life on Earth, and these are known as macromolecules. Macro means big. So here you can see we've got carbohydrates, proteins, lipids, and nucleic acids. Today we will be talking about carbohydrates. That's why it's bolded and underlined, so you can get the idea. And something else you need to know about is monomers and polymers. So monomers are basically little building blocks and then polymers are like chains of those building blocks and macromolecules are basically a bunch of cha those chains of building blocks that are all combined together in a certain way and that creates these macromolecules so this image right here this is a monomer this is a carbohydrate monomer okay when you combine a bunch of these together they're going to make a polymer so here you can see how we've got a bunch of these and they're all just connected together. When I say combined, I kind of mean connected and that is create, and this is like a polymer chain. Now, when you connect a bunch of these polymer chains together, you're gonna get a one of these, you're gonna get a macromolecule and like we mentioned, these are the macromolecules. And today we'll be focusing on this specific macromolecule, which is carbohydrates. Now, carbohydrates, they're made of carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen. You need to know that. Um, the ratio is 1, 2, 2, to 1. They're categorized as either monosaccharides, disaccharides, or polysaccharides. Saccharides, as you may notice, is a common term here, and it basically means sugar. Mono is 1, di is 2, and poly is many. So monosaccharide is you can kind of tell it's basically one sugar molecule carbohydrate okay so let's talk about monosaccharides and they're basically simple sugars so they're really used as an energy source and um the common ones that you may have heard of is glucose and fructose they're monosaccharides it's just one monomer they're both six carbon sugars, meaning their um, monomer has six carbon sugars in it. 
The glucose formula is C6H12O6. Now, a lot of times you'll notice it written like this because many times computer applications don't allow those subscripts. So that's why sometimes on exams and tests, this is what it may show, but it is actually seen as like this. So this is what it is. So whenever numbers after this kind of like a um, uppercase alphabet letter, then you can assume it to be like a subscript, especially in biology. Um, glucose is also plentiful and it is and it can be like broken down and it gives energy to plants and humans. So if you remember photosynthesis, remember that plants use sunlight and water and carbon dioxide, which are their reactants, and they make products through the process of um, photosynthesis. They make the products, which is glucose and oxygen, okay? Fructose is basically a common sugar in fruits, okay? And they can be both illustrated as either rings or straight. So that kind of shows their structure, either rings or straight. So well, what does that mean? So this is basically a ring form of glucose, and this is a straight chain of form of glucose. So if they show you just this picture, you should be able to tell that, hey, this is glucose. Or if they show you this, then this you, know, you should be told that, hey, this is also glucose. And they both all mean the same thing, but they're just organized differently. So you cannot say that this isn't glucose and this is glucose or vice versa because they're both glucose but just the way they're organized is differently again this is a ring structure this is our and this is a straight chain the same goes for fructose this is a ring structure and this is a chain now let's talk about disaccharide Disaccharides are basically when two monosaccharides are combined together. So that means that here we notice that glucose, this right here is a monosaccharide, okay? So when you combine two of two glucose monosaccharides, it's going to create a disaccharide, which will which is known as maltose, which we're going to talk about next. So remember that when a hydrogen combines with another monosaccharide, this hydroxyl group, which is OH, it's going to create a disaccharide, and that's going to um, release water. So, basically, what I'm trying to say here is this. So, maltose is an example of disaccharide, and maltose is created when you combine two of these glucose monomers, and they're going to create this disaccharide. I'm sorry, monomers as in monosaccharides they're going to create this maltose, which is a disaccharide. And when they combine this H, this OH group and this H group, it's going to create water, plus it's going to make this maltose. Now, this process is known as dehydration synthesis or condensation in synthesis or condensation synthesis water is removed and this is the next topic that we're going to cover about so ignore the known as so monosaccharides they're basically joined using a glycosidic linkage and so the combined sugar is known as a disaccharide so remember two monosaccharides you combine them using a glycosidic linkage it's going to create a disaccharide so two monosaccharides of glucose combined creates a maltose disaccharide and maltose is a disaccharide. Now, for so and this basically kind of shows what I just explained. So remember that here we're talking about dehydration synthesis because in the earlier, in the last slide here, we noticed that when you that in order to create a disaccharide, you combine two monosaccharides plus water, and that's going to give you a disaccharide. So you can easily assume that in order to remove, in order to break apart. A disaccharide all you need to do is take away the water which is known as dehydration synthesis or condensation and again you want to know these kind of like basic words so that way it'll be a lot easier on your exam and test so like dehydration means losing water synthesis means formation so this is again that dehydration synthesis 
So we've got our two uh, monosaccharides. We add them together. It's going to give us this disaccharide, plus it's going to give us this H2O, which is water. Now, like we mentioned earlier, if you want to break up a disaccharide molecule, you have to add water because in this one, we're removing the water, right? Like water is also being produced. It's being removed. In here, opposite of produced, opposite of removed is add. So you're adding it. So now if you want to break a disaccharide, you have to add some water. And this process is known as hydrolysis because hydro means water and lysis means breaking. So that's going to help you. Now water is kind of used to break that bond between the two monomers, hence water breaking. So again, here we have that same um, diagram. So we've got maltose, which is two glucose uh, monosaccharides plus water. Now all we have to do to break this maltose up is we have to add, is we have to um, add the water. So all you have to do is we've got this correct, and all you have to do is just add some water, boom, you're going to get two glucose molecules. So I hope that makes sense a little bit. I know it's a little bit tricky to grasp and imagine it because we can't really see it very well. But now let's go ahead and talk about polysaccharides. Polysaccharides, they're basically made up of repeated monosaccharides. And some examples of common polysaccharides is like starch, glycogen, cellulose, and you may have heard of these terms before. For instance, many animals, they store glucose in the form of glycogen in like their liver and muscles. We've got cellulose, which is also, remember, it's created of beta glucose molecules and it's typically in the cell walls of plants. And also a famous one, chitin, which is also a polymer, it's made up of beta glucose molecules and it's in the walls of fungus and like exoskeletons of many animals. So I hope you guys liked this video. If you did, please go ahead and give this a big thumbs up. If you scroll down, you'll see a button like this. Go ahead, click this button. And while you're at it, you'll also see this big red button that please also click that. And while you're at it, also go share this video with your friends and family and tell them to like and subscribe because hey it's free who doesn't want to do it since it's free and that way nobody will ever miss out on any other videos that we update but yeah and once again remember to go follow our instagram which is a learning.magnet and over there you guys can message us of video topics you want us to cover and we'll, and we'll make videos of them as soon as possible and update it back to you so yeah, hope you guys have a great day and bye.